The Indus River has long provided countries such as China, India and Pakistan with clean water for drinking and irrigation. And while several dams exist along the long Indus River, in 1998 the government of Pakistan put in motion the plan to build the world's tallest dam in Gilgit, Baltistan. This dam, as well as the many others that already exist, are meant to increase irrigation for Pakistan's farmland, generate electricity for its residents and even bring development and tourism to the country. However, some argue that these dams have more downsides than benefits as they displace local residents and flood existing farmland. While the dam was suggested in 1980, it wasn't until 1998 that the project got the green light. Then, it wasn't until 2004 that the first feasibility report was prepared. Finally, in 2008, the revised feasibility report was approved, but the contract for construction wasn't awarded until 2020. For years, Pakistan has been involved in one way or another in several civil and international armed conflicts. Though many argue that planned construction for the Diyamir Basha Dam hasn't been slow by the government or military disputes, but by a simple lack of funding. The Diyama Bashir Dam has an estimated construction cost of over $14 billion, money that the Pakistani government hasn't had or hasn't wanted to dedicate to the dam over the past two decades. After years of preparing to build the dam, the government of Pakistan actually removed the project from its CPEC list in 2018, as they couldn't find any investors. But that very same year, China began its Belt and Road Initiative and reached out to Pakistan Pakistan directly and expressed its enthusiasm to finally help with this and several other dams they had planned along the Indus River. So luckily in 2020, the Pakistani government finally signed a $5.2 billion contract with China Power and Frontier Works organization to fund the construction of the dam. Along with these two major investors, the US Agency for International Development has also contributed $20 million to the project. All of this funding is being managed and distributed by the Executive Committee of the National Economic Council ECNEC, of the Government of Pakistan. While the Diyama Basha Dam is still considered to be in the primary construction phase, it seems that with this new money ready to be spent, the dam may actually be completed within the decade. In fact, they now estimate that it will be completed by 2029. Since the project was first inaugurated by the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawaz Sharif, in 1998, if the dam is completed by 2029, that would mean it will take an incredible 31 years to build. However, it is important to note that construction didn't start in any real way until 2020. So realistically, it took 22 years to create the plan and then, hopefully, 14 years to construct it. Today's Prime Minister of Pakistan, Anwar ul haq Kakam, has only held the position since August 14th, 2023. So while he and the Pakistan Water and Power Development Authority, WAPDA, are technically in charge of the funding, building and managing of the dam, exactly how he specifically plans to take on this giant project is still unknown. Luckily, Anwar ul haq Kakar won't have to worry about the design of the Diyama Basha Dam, as that was set in stone more than a decade before he became the head of the project. This new dam will sit about 195 miles upriver from the Tarbela Dam and 24 miles downstream from the Chilius in the Khyber, Paktunkwa and Diyama district of Gilgit, Baltistan near the town of Basha, hence its name, the Diyama Basha Dam. It's important to note that the location of the dam is considered by some engineers to be fairly subpar. In fact, one engineer, Anwar Kershid, said, Basha Dam is no substitute for Kalabag Dam, not because of its altitude, which is high enough, but because no irrigation canals can be taken out from it because of the hilly terrain. The Kalabag Dam that he refers to has not been built yet, but if all goes to plan, it will be another giant and likely more efficient dam for Pakistan on the Indus River. Others have noted that because the site is located in a high seismic zone, it could have disastrous effects on the land as well as the people who live there. Some scientists expect that the dam which is supposed to curtail flooding could actually cause flooding and even dangerous landslides. At 892 feet, the Diyama Basha Dam will be the tallest roller compacted concrete RCC dam on the planet. There is a dam in China that reaches an incredible 1,001 feet in height, but it is not an RCC 
dam. An RCC dam differs from other types of dams, as it is made from a unique kind of concrete that uses Portland cement instead of fly ash. This simple but effective replacement creates a more stable mixture that once dry is far less likely to crack in the heat. To build a dam made from RCC, the sections are essentially built lift by lift in horizontal layers that look a lot like a giant set of stairs, and immediately after one layer is set, it can hold the weight of any construction vehicles needed to build the next layer. The very first RCC dam was built in the state of Oregon in the USA in 1981, and the project was finished on a surprisingly fast schedule and under budget, which for any construction project, big or small, is pretty amazing. The design and plan for the dam was completed in 2008. It states that the dam will be 0.6 miles wide and 892 feet high, which in comparison is 160 feet higher than the Hoover Dam. The Diamabasha Dam will have two tunnels, one canal, 14 gates, that are each 54 by 49 feet, two powerhouses, and eight generator units. It will also have a gross capacity of 7,300,000 acre feet, a life capacity of 6,400,000 acre feet, and an average power generation of 16,500 gigawatt hours. Finally, the dam will produce 4,800 megawatts of electricity with what they call hydropower generation. It's also important to note that by creating an amazing amount of energy, the Diamabasha Dam will also play a big part in reducing the need for fossil fuels, such as thermal power in Pakistan. This will of course be necessary in every corner of the world if we ever hope to get climate change under control. The Pakistani government argues that the dam has several advantages in addition to cutting down on fossil fuels. For example, the dam will be a huge water source for the country, as it will store an amazing 8.5 million acre feet of water that the citizens of Pakistan can use for drinking and farm irrigation. As well, an incredible 4,500 megawatts of electricity will be created that can power much of the surrounding areas. It will also extend the longevity of the Tarbella Dam that sits downriver by at least 35 years, control flooding from the Indus River that affects local towns, create a fresh water fishing industry, and increase the number of trees in the area, which will consequently improve air quality. The government also reports that by building the tallest RCC dam in the world, there will certainly be a development of new tourism in the area. That means more hotels, restaurants, and activities such as fishing and water sports that will absolutely improve the local economy. But it's not just the next generation that will benefit financially from the dam. The Pakistani government also claims that the project will create up to 15,000 jobs during construction and operation. This means that in rural communities surrounding the dam, up to 5,000 families will have an increased income. As with any project of this magnitude, the Diamabasha Dam has certainly sparked debate throughout the countries of Pakistan and India, as well as around the world. Of course, some will argue that the dam will be a wonderful and helpful addition to the community, while others couldn't disagree more. Many state that the dam has a wide range of downsides, as it's caused an incredible amount of displacement for local residents. According to the data collected, 31 villages have been affected, including 4,000 houses and 35,000 people. So far, 28,000 locals have been resettled in other homes, 1,500 square acres of agricultural land have been submerged, and the reservoir itself covers a whopping 25,000 acres of land in the once residential area. While the government of Pakistan is claiming that these 28,000 displaced citizens will benefit from the move with new and improved villages that include health centers, clean water, better roads, and many other benefits, there is certainly some debate as to whether or not forcing them to move was the right decision. Another complicated aspect of the dam's location is that part of it technically sits in a disputed territory between India and Pakistan. India claims that Pakistan is illegally using their land in Gilgit, Baltistan, and for decades begged investors from China and the USA to refuse to fund the dam. Even the land that is undeniably in Pakistan has caused problems because it straddles two provinces, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Gilgit Baltistan, and the local governments in each state cannot see eye to eye or agree on how to share the royalties it will provide. Actually, although the dam now has wealthy investors, at first Pakistan struggled to get any company to sign on to fund the project due to its less than deal location. Complaints from India over territory disputes and the expensive and complicated displacement of local residents that needed to occur. Archaeologists from Pakistan and around the world have also spoken out against the Diamabasha Dam because in order to build it, they will be submerging rock carvings and petroglyphs that date back to 6000 BCE. These historians hope that the government will safely remove the carvings before construction is completed and move them to a safe zone to preserve them, as well as offer a bit of local history for tourists and locals alike. With these many possible benefits and disadvantages, 
years. It seems for decades that this dam, the soon-to-be-tallest RCC dam in the world, would never be started, let alone completed. But this dam is now well on the way to completion. But while the government of Pakistan plans to have the Diyanabasha Dam finished by 2029, they will need to work fast and get even more funding along the way to make it happen. For now, the world is certainly watching to see how construction goes, if it really will improve life for Pakistani citizens and create the jobs and revenue that Pakistan promised it would. If it does, Pakistan will likely continue with its plan to build even more dams along the Indus River. If you enjoyed this video and want to dive deeper into the world of construction, be sure to hit that subscribe button. See you in the next video.